hello guys what's up how you all doing welcome back to another reaction video today we'll be checking out this video from matt fraud matt fraud matt fraud matt fraud <laughs> how i propose to candice owens this is coming from my husband george farms we're going to be listening to their proposal how he proposed to her how he asked her to marry her i mean the whole the big Candice. Everybody loves Candice. Okay, not everybody loves Candice. I love Candice, okay? I'm a big fan of Candice. But I really love their to, you know, listen to their love story. How she fell in love with this white guy and how he proposed to her, okay? Before we dive into it, my name is Oge. Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, hello, hi. Do us a like, share, subscribe, turn on post notification bell. Let's check this out together. Yeah, so when did you move to America? Moved over in 2019. Um, in for marriage, yeah, pretty much. When I met, when I'm so Candace and I met in December of 2018, and we got engaged very quickly after 17 days. Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thursday just looked up. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, when you, I mean, just it was one of those things. I mean, it was a, it was very much a God thing. Um, the Lord was in control of that whole process, and um. I mean, it was quite a funny... The full story is quite insane. I mean, the full story was... She she actually came to London to do an event um, with the organization she was with at the time, which was called Turning Point. And um, even the build-up to that story is quite funny. So she, she basically... Charlie Kirk, who runs Turning Point, and Candace were kind of doing a speaking tour of the US. And... Um, UK, you mean? Or? No, this was this was still when they were in the US, okay. right? And um, she said to him one day, she was like, I, "I feel like we should go and do an, do some events in in England. We should go and do some events in London." And Charlie sort of was like, "Okay, well, you know, we'd sort of they'd sort of been thinking about doing something or a sister organization in the UK." And so she then became very belligerent about it, and she, when she looks back on it now, she says I had no idea why I was so belligerent about going to the UK um, but there was this kind of great calling that she felt that we needed to go and do this event in London we, we should get the Turning Point UK chapter on the map etc etc and so she, Charlie got in touch well she got in touch actually with some people in the UK and sort of said hey heads up we're coming over in December of 2018 and um, that info was relayed to me I was quite involved in British politics at the time um, so it kind of made sense. I'd heard of her organization. Her organization is called Blexit, um, which is the black exit from progressive policies. And, you know, I was very involved in Brexit. So, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like a synergy there. Mm -hmm. And she came over and um, she did this. We did this event. They did an event at the Royal Automobile Club in London in 2018, which was... Um, for about 300 I would say three to 400 people and I was in the audience and I just something about her demeanor just kind of instantly struck me I and mean, it was it was very unusual I remember messaging a friend of mine you know a couple of days afterwards just being like there's something different about this girl there's something different about had you met her yet or just seen her from we, stage we'd shaken hands and that mm -hmm. was it um, and then the next night I organized this dinner for a whole group of people so it was her and Charlie as well and and they actually turned up three hours late because they were doing a a podcast in the countryside and so when they came back into town it was kind of like three hour late but we sort of got to know each other a little bit better and then the next week I flew over to the states to see her speaking at a conference in Florida um, and nothing had been said like there'd be no there'd be no romantic overtures at all uh, at any of these at any of this point um, it had all just been very kind of above board and talking about politics and engaging in kind of philosophical conversations and then at the end of December we started like I started I called her a couple of times just to kind of chat and again you know just had these long like prolonged conversations which were mainly about politics and trying to understand what she wanted to do in life and at the end of December um, I was actually flying to South Africa at the time for New Year's and I called her and I just said listen I know this is completely crazy and we've just met but uh, how do you feel about getting married to me? Wow. Just real quick <laughs> <It's like that. laughs> I missed the bit where there was any sort of 
there was literally nothing nothing romantic had been said up to this point okay I mean literally nothing. so, okay, gone, so I missed nothing we, we hadn't gone on a date we had not talked about marriage or the future or anything like that <clears throat> alright and I just I, and she said yes no yeah come on she did that didn't happen yeah she <laughs> you're making it up <laughs> it's all fiction um fake news uh no it was it was this guy's not even candace owen's husband <laughs> i thought it was weird that he would refuse to go to paris <laughs> who is he uh, what a strange Some random thing. guy they just pulled off the street and stupid right you just you just you called her up and yeah. said how would you feel about getting married yeah were you nervous were you serious I was, or were you partly no, expect it was this a pickup line no i mean and <laughs> no i was 100 percent serious i mean i uh, you know i i felt that there's a little bit of a, a story there also in relation to like okay something i'll quickly like to say I, I mean i love listening to love stories how it has how it started how it went on and on and on i mean let's leave candice and all her baggages right all her political baggage aside i love candice but i let's just talk about their love story okay i mean i feel like i mean they've not had any convo before his proposal to her one thing I want to pick out from this is he already knew her. Like probably he has read about her. He had, like he said, yeah, he called her several times. They had talked about politics, what she wanted from life, and all of those things. So he already knew her. He knew what he wanted. That's so. One lesson I wanted to learn, or one lesson I wanted to pick out from this is, as a woman, even as a man, don't sit down and wait for marriage. Go ahead and and, and do your thing. It will find you along the way. Do you understand what I mean? Candice was just doing her thing. And, you know, she was working with Charlie Kirk, Tony Point, Afri um, Ch Tony Point USA. Just doing her thing. She had the burden to go to the UK. And even going to the UK, she never knew anybody like George Farms was there. You know, or George Farmer was there to, you know. You know, she was just doing her thing. And then it found her. Prior to that, this guy, maybe he never had an intention. See, I want to say maybe Loki, Loki, Loki. He had an intention to ask her, but he was just reading up about her, watching her videos, checking up on her, those kind of stuff. Maybe I, I don't want to say stalking her, but he already was looking at her. Do you understand? He was looking at her and see that oh, this lady, you know. And then he just went ahead to ask her. So one lesson I wanted to draw from or pull out from this whole story is, as a woman, right? Even as a man, just. Don't sit down and wait for marriage, especially women that are in their marriageable age. Let me use that word. Women that are in their marriageable age, don't sit down and wait for marriage. Why don't you just continue your life? Just be doing your thing. I think it will find you along the way. Do you understand? I love love stories. Please, I love it. Let's continue. Like the hand of God in all of this, which is that, um, you know, when I was first up to this point, I had been kind of, I would say, dormant in my faith um, and not really living, you know, a godly life, not really living a life which was, you know, meritous of being worthy, being called a Christian life, really. And, but I had been praying this prayer because I've been saying to the Lord, like, please, can you show me the path before my feet? You know, what is this path that you, what is the path of my life? Where do you want me to end up? What do you want me to do? And, um, in the aftermath of first meeting her about a week later i had this long car ride um, this long car journey where i was driving down to devon which is a county in england which is about three and a half hours outside of london and i remember having this very powerful vivid emotion kind of overwhelming sense of god speaking to me saying you were praying this you were asking for this so here is here is the path there are now two paths before your feet there's the path that you've walked currently which is you know in many ways i would say like a a life not lived for him right it was a life lived for me um and then there's a second path which i'm putting in front of you which is a life which you don't necessarily know the outcome of yet you don't know where this path is going to lead but this is the path that i'm putting before your feet and it's now up to you to choose it um and that car ride that I had, you know, kind of was formative in some ways because um, I just really, I felt this overwhelming sense of, 
I have to act. This is this is it. This is this is that cringeworthy moment that they talk about in the, in in all films where it's like you have Crossroads. to you have to choose the the right path for you, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and so it was that kind of moment. And I realized that God was speaking to me, and 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 so I called actually my dad at the time, and I and I said to him, I said, I know this is crazy because next weekend is Christmas, but I'm going to fly to America tomorrow and uh, go and spend some time at this conference where she was speaking at. I'm, I'm getting mixed up on the timeline. It was it after this car ride where you felt God speak to you that you then called her. So we met on December 11th. Um, we had dinner on December 12th. It was about a week later on December 18th that I had the, the car ride, right. the car journey. Um, the next day I flew to the US. That was when we spent three days together just getting to know each other. Then I flew back back to England for Christmas, gotcha. spent Christmas with my family. And then the week after Christmas was the week that I called her a couple of times, started to get to know her. You know, we, I said, hey, do you want to FaceTime? It was like, I was expecting like a 10 minute FaceTime. We ended up FaceTiming for like three and a half hours. Um, and then on December 29th, I asked her to marry me. Wow. wow. So that was the kind of, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, everyone thought I was mad. Everyone thought we were both mad. You know, I mean, it was just nuts. <laughs> like my parents were kind of like, what is this? You know, are you being serious kind of thing? And, um, you know, one of my sisters was, she, she actually just laughed about the whole thing she was just like this is this is so not you but it's also very you you know and so she kind of she came out with that line which i thought was quite a funny way of putting it um and then you know a lot of my friends kind of didn't believe it or they sort of thought that i was trying to hoist something on them and then they kind of realized that i was being serious and then a lot of them got on board um and then kind of we didn't we didn't just sort of announce it to the world because it was it was too it was kind of too much for a lot of people to process they just thought that it was like a joke and um so we kind of held back announcing it and i think we finally actually put something out about it kind of in february or something like that Mm. um but that was the kind of timeline that we went through how long were you engaged for until you married eight months eight months yeah we got married in august of the following year august when yeah august the august the 6th yeah don't mess that up yeah, yeah august yeah, 12th for me yeah. that's why i asked oh really yeah 2006 oh wow that's so cool yeah i had the pleasure of meeting your bride yesterday yeah what an unbelievable cool, woman huh? yeah exactly yeah. thank you very much for watching that clip I mean, one thing i'm going to say is when you know you know usually for the men or for the man i don't say for the men <laughs> usually for the man when you know you actually know yeah, even for the woman, like Candice, when she he asked her, she would have said, because I mean, she was a hot cake, she was a fine girl, or she's a fine girl, right? She would have, she would have said, um, no, let me think about it, let me pray about it, but most of the time, when you know, you know, and you might, it might look crazy to the world, it might not be like in marriage, even in your career path, you leave a good paying job to pursue a particular thing, and people are like, are you crazy? Why will you leave a, cra- a, 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 a good paying job for this this thing? But you know that this is the path God wants you to walk in. And I love the aspect where he mentioned the God factor. So God was in full play in the whole picture. God was in the center of the whole thing, right? He didn't just do everything. Even though, yeah, I mean, it was, it, 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 it was really fast. And I feel like it was really fast. But at the end of the day, when you know, you know when this person is for you you know this person is for you and when you know this person is not for you sometimes people get married to the wrong people and then they say oh this is that. but sometimes you will know when there are red flags in probably your courtship period you know when you're not supposed to say yes to this man but you go ahead to say yes to this man for your own personal reasons do you understand so sometimes we know most of the time when you know you know so this is actually a beautiful love story i've heard people who get engaged in one week of meeting each other it can be that crazy and that's because i mean and they've had and they are still thriving in their marriage they're still doing well they're still growing and glowing yeah so candy's own proposal came after 17 days according to george farmer yeah so yeah this um a very beautiful love story i love love stories anyway but let me know your thoughts and comments on what you think about this do you guys think that any proposals is actually not a bad thing do you guys think when you know, you know, and then you go for it, you get, yeah. Because, yeah, me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big sucker of 
if you know you are very sure and very certain that this is the thing for you marriage career whatever choice it is once you are certain and you are sure that this is what i want to do you go for it no matter how short it is i've seen people who get married within two months one week two weeks and they are still thriving in their marriage so it's not usually it might not be how long it might be yeah it might not be how long anyway let's know your thoughts on what you think about this proposal story of candice owens and her husband it's a very beautiful love story yeah beautiful love story they knew what they wanted and they went for it please let's end it here do not forget to like share subscribe and drop a comment on what you think about this video i'll see you in my next episode bye